Hey there class. This week we'll be talking about somatic motor pathways. In other words, how do we produce movement? So let's take a look at what we've learned so far. Previously we learned about the divisions within the nervous system of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. In the central nervous system we have our brain and our spinal cord and we've already gone over the mechanisms of how these neurons communicate with one another. You've also learned that neurons with specific functions are compartmentalized in certain locations within the CNS. In the PNS, we've gone over afferent or sensory transmission. So this includes things like somatic sensory, information that's coming in from the skin, skeletal muscles, special senses. So these special senses include sight, balance, hearing, taste, smell, etc. And we also have visceral sensory information. So we didn't talk too much about this, but this is how we uh, perceive uh, sensory information coming from all our different organs. So what we're going to focus on this week is these motor or efferent pathways, so transmitting information away from the central nervous system. So we already went over the autonomic motor systems, which innervates a lot of the visceral organs that help maintain homeostasis. And we talked about the sympathetic and the parasympathetic branches. So this week, what we're going to be talking about is the somatic motor efferents, which innervate our skeletal muscles. And they're responsible for voluntary uh, and involuntary pathways. Just to give you a, a brief review, on the left you see the primary motor cortex. And depicted along it is the homunculus, where the size of uh, the particular part of the body represents to uh, the amount of neurons that are dedicated to controlling that part. And so the primary motor cortex uh, has these pyramidal neurons which send their axons down through the brainstem and down through the spinal cord through the corticospinal tracts. Along the spinal cord they synapse onto motor neurons and these motor neurons then project outwards into the peripheral nervous system onto muscles and those are responsible for generating movements. And so this pathway that we see here is dedicated to producing voluntary movements, right? We initiate a response from the primary motor cortex and it transmits the information down the spinal cord and eventually reaches our skeletal muscles. And so like I said, the voluntary muscles involve conscious control. In contrast, we have reflexes, which are involuntary responses. And so these involuntary responses are due to some external stimuli causing our body to react. This doesn't involve any conscious awareness, uh, and it does not involve the motor cortex. Instead, it, it completely bypasses the brain and has a very, very fast response time. So you all have had experience with reflexes before. So when you step on a Lego and uh, your foot retracts, that is a reflex. So in this week's material, you'll be exploring the mechanisms behind voluntary movement and reflexes. So as you go through this week's material, I wanted to emphasize certain points to focus on. The first is being structure and function relationships. So like we said before, all of these different neurons that are involved in producing movements are arranged in certain fashion. So go ahead and pay attention to that. Uh, secondly, pay attention to the causal mechanism behind producing these reflexes or these voluntary movements. As always, always relate these phenomena back to those core physiological principles. With that, you're ready to learn about reflexes and voluntary movement.